Welcome back to the Tom Hartman program. Uh, continuing to join us in studio, Dr. Maya Rockymore. Um, this is a really important conversation. I could spend an, a long time on it, um, and you know, but we have uh, in this in this country, white supremacy can uh, manifest itself in almost every aspect uh, of this country. You brought one up that is really important, but people just kind of don't think of it. I I don't think, or many people don't. Uh, so I, by virtue of being white, have an advantage on my credit score. Uh, that is a, a bias that just exists uh, because demographics, right? They say, oh, well, this is science or actuarial, and they cut people up into different, and I just get a bump on my credit score just by virtue of being a white male. Uh, and that is not because of a sort of, it's not like the actuary has to be a white nationalist, right? Yeah. They're, they're looking at data tables and they're saying, oh no, but this, but the real world impl implications of that are massive and yeah. they continue the wealth disparity, right? Absolutely. You can't get a, it's harder to get a, a car loan. It's harder to get a mortgage. All of the decisions that are made, it's harder to get a job. All, right. um, all of those things all trace back to this credit score, right? And now what we're seeing with technology is a sort of autom what what word am I looking for? Automation. Automation of those processes, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more about that. So big data. Uh, right. Well, actually, let me back up because when you talk about credit scoring, credit scoring in itself is a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's ontological and it's and it's racialized in nature. So, you know, people get build credit by the kinds of credit they have access to, right? right. So if you live in a low-income neighborhood and somebody down the street is going to sell you a rent-to-own couch that you get on an installment loan, you know, you go ahead and do that, not realizing that that kind of installment loan is worth less in terms of credit uh, compared to like a jumbo mortgage uh, or, uh, you know, a conventional mortgage, uh, which is going to get you a, a better credit scoring in terms of how they do it on the back end. So literally the world that you live in, which is often racialized because we live in a highly segregated society, um, actually um, uh, shapes the kind of credit you build. At the same time, as you well know, low-income populations who are disproportionately unemployed compared to whites, et cetera, et cetera, and, and have, a, um, you know, challenges paying, paying, paying on time, especially when you're in the lower income status. Uh, you know, all of that comes into bear and to play. Um, and big data itself, the kind of data that we collect is biased. And now we're actually seeing the bias in data actually being accelerated because we have machine learning, where they take the big data and the machines are learning from themselves, but reinforcing the biases that exist in the real world by because they're actually relying on original bias data. Mm -hmm. So in um, we have 30 seconds mm -hmm. here. The idea here is if you start, it's, it's basically like comparable to junk in, junk out, mm -hmm. uh, where That's right. if you have the data going in that has these biases mm -hmm. and then you have a process that basically amplifies that, right. and it could be an astronomical number of times, right? With mm -hmm. machine learning, that's the point of it. Run hundreds of thousands or millions of data sets. Well, if each one has a little bit of bias, what comes out the end can be a massive bias. Absolutely. You can find out more about all of the stuff that we're talking about at uh, globalpolicysolutions.org. There is so much amazingly important research here uh, that, you know, I really want people to learn about this, and I'm trying uh, to, to do my best of like, but there's no way we can really get at all of it. So yeah. I do think people need to go to your site, read your reports, um, and see that they, these are incredibly complex, uh, but they're not disconnected from reality. These are real issues that we're facing right now. Absolutely. So let's go to this one. If you have, it's kind of like junk in, junk out. If you mm -hmm. have some bias, like a credit score has bias mm -hmm. in it, mm -hmm. uh, racial bias embedded in it, mm -hmm. and then you put it into a machine learning system, mm -hmm. these uh, complex algorithms that do accomplish a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So the businesses see, oh, well, I'll make money by relying on this to make decisions. But if there's a bias that can get put in there, it can be amplified massively. It gets exacerbated, amplified, and then what's, you know, garbage in, garbage out. What comes out actually has um, massively negative consequences for real people. Tell us a little bit mm -hmm. about some of these. Like, what are, what are you looking at? Um, 
and what is coming down, uh, what, what's in the future? So one thing I do want to highlight is our recently re released report. It's called Stick Shift, Autonomous uh, Vehicles, Driving Jobs, and the Future of Work. Um, you know, we've been looking at and curious about what automation, increased automation, is going to actually mean for Americans, American workers. And so we decided to, be, given that there's such a race now amongst the technology firms and the car companies to um, actually deploy this uh, driverless car vehicle technology, uh, we wanted to understand what was happening with this with regards to workers. And so our paper, our recently released paper, actually models a scenario where there is a relatively rapid transition to uh, level five technology, which does not require human beings, which they're actually perfecting uh, right now, these, these companies. Uh, and we found that approximately 4.1 million jobs are at risk. Uh, we found that, you know... So correct me mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, but it's like the... The easier part of automation is not mm -hmm. going to be just everyone gets in their car like the Jetsons and it drives somewhere, but mm -hmm. uh, there could be truck routes, right, right, that always do the same thing, right? So it goes from point A to yeah. point B back, and those are autom auto um, automated. <laughs> and so I should tell you that what we looked at were trucking. We looked at mm -hmm. delivery car or, or delivery trucks and heavy trucks. Uh, we looked at buses. And we looked at chauffeurs and taxis. Those were the only uh, professional drivers that we looked at. Um, and, and there are 4.1 million of those on our nation's roads. The vast majority of those workers, 93%, have less than a college education. Uh, and the, the, the money that they get, the income that they get from these driving jobs is relatively good. It keeps them out of, of poverty. Uh, what we, our analysis finds that if this happens, um, the vast majority of those workers who are actually white men uh, will be disproportionately and heavily affected. Uh, and, and that states like Iowa, Mississippi, um, Arkansas, Indiana, uh, North Dakota, uh, West Virginia will be hard hit um, for two reasons. One, they have a disproportionate number of their labor market in driving jobs. And two, those drivers in those states earn a driving premium from those jobs, meaning that they earn more from driving than they would from uh, non-driving jobs. Uh, you know, there's also a people of color angle with uh, African-Americans, Latinos and Native Americans actually also um, uh, uh, probably going to experience a disproportionately negative effect because of the same reason disproportionately represented in those jobs and then also earning a driving premium from those jobs. So there is a, a massive change that's coming to our nation um, and it's called automation. What we project is Thank just you. That's in the, the word that I just <laughs> uh, automation. It's Thank just you. in. But, you know, just think about it. When you go to the convenience store, when you go to CVS, you know, when you see those self checkouts or you go to the grocery store and you see those self checkouts, those used to be people. Just think about it. Now we're seeing, you know, we've gotten used to not seeing an actual human teller at the bank. You know, we just go and get our money out of a machine. But now we've got restaurants. You can walk into a restaurant in downtown D.C. or San Francisco or New York and never come into contact with a human being. You put your order in on an iPad and your food comes out of a wall and you never see or touch a human being. I'll tell you one thing about the, um, the grocery store one. That's just annoying. <laughs> right? I mean, like, now they... they, they got you to believe that bagging your own groceries and everything and mm -hmm. uh, checking out and doing that labor yourself is a convenience. It's like, I don't know how they sold that one. So Sam, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this back around. And that is the fact that, you know, studies vary, uh, but the higher end estimates project that um, within the next 20 years, there could be a 47% of American jobs could be put at risk due to automation. And this is not just low wage, low skill jobs. It's also white collar jobs that are projected to be affected. And so this is not the time to be tearing down our social safety net. This is mm -hmm. not the time to be taking apart our social insurance system brick by brick, which we know the Republicans have always wanted to do. This is now the time because there are so many vulnerabilities due to automation for us to be strengthening our social insurance safety net. Uh, so we can protect these workers and their families as we make a transition to a new economy and new jobs. Because work is going to look different in the future. And it doesn't have to be negative if mm -hmm. we go into it. I mean, that's the point of wise public policy, mm -hmm. uh, and which is what you do, right? You're mm -hmm. looking at these issues before they become problems. Uh, and, or, it, you know, there's it's starting. And you can say, okay, well, 
this is probably where we're going to go. So let's have some public policies mm -hmm. that help uh, make this transition actually work for people. So I'm a big believer, and you don't have to be scared of mm -hmm. the future with robots. Mm -hmm. uh, you should be happy because uh, maybe we're going to get to the point with wise public policy where, you know, you don't actually have to work uh, 40 hours a week or something. The issue will be mm. if all the gains of automation go to the very few, right? If what they do is they get rid of all of the labor uh, and the workers get cut out of all of the gains in productivity, and it all goes up to this global oligarchy, this handful of super rich people, and everyone else is left in a world where there are no jobs. Which, with the current political structure that we have, is likely. Right. I mean, we have people in power who do not believe in support. Look, I call them policy sociopaths. Yeah, I call them arsonists. <laughs> Look at this American Health Care Act, this travesty Trump of what they called the in Trump care, what they called health care reform, which would have li it was literally going to kill people. Yeah. And they didn't Destroyed have any Medicaid, qualms. Raids Medicare 117 billion dollars, uh, throws 24 million people off of their health insurance. While no. giving a $600 billion tax enrichment to the already rich. Yeah, I call it a handout. That's what they're looking for, because that's the way that the global oligarchy gets rich. They steal our money. It's an upward redistribution of wealth. In the last uh, minute here, 45 seconds, uh, Maya, uh, can you tell everybody where they can go to find more? Because we might have laid out the problem, but there are solutions. The solution is people power, first of all. Mm -hmm. We have to beat the global oligarchy. We have mm -hmm. to beat the arsonists. Mm -hmm. uh, but first, arm yourself with the data. So where can people find out more? Go to our website, globalpolicysolutions.org. If you're on Facebook, uh, just type in Global Policy Solutions and like us. If you're on Twitter, we're at Policy Solutions. We'd love to engage you. And uh, coming up, if you're in D.C., uh, your summit is coming up here in D.C. Uh, tell us again about that. It's actually sold out, but, oh. but we, we, we're going to actually run a live cast okay. because we've got great demand. Um, 2017 uh, Future of Wealth Summit. It, go to our website. You can actually uh, register and we'll put you on a wait list and we'll send you the live cast so that you can participate. So uh, the answer is globalpolicysolutions.org. Dr. Maya Rocky Moore, thank you so much for joining us on the Tom Hartman program. A pleasure to be with the great Alex Lawson. I don't know about that, but I am Alex Lawson filling in for Tom Hartman and you're listening to the Tom Hartman program. Yeah. We'll be right back after this.